One solution to the given equation can be written as x equals 5 plus n, the square root of n, where n is a constant. What is the value of n? Well, let's look at that. I can't see that as being factorable. It's not, so we're going to have to do the old quadratic formula. Let me sing a song. Hopefully this goes viral. <clears throat> x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. a is invisible 1, b is negative 10, c is 14. Let's plug it in. Negative, negative 10, it's regular old 10, plus or minus, positive or negative, the square root of negative 10 in parentheses squared minus 4 times 1 times 14 all over 2 times 1. So let's move that over here, do some simplifying. 10 plus or minus the square root of 100 because negative 10 squared is 100 minus 56. all over two times one. Let me get my calculator out Two. Now I think what's gonna happen is this is gonna be a nice even number that you can use the traits of uh, simplifying roots to pull a two out. That's probably what's gonna happen and that's why this looks like this without an over two. You might be thinking, what about the over two and where does that five come from? You'll see, I think I know what's gonna happen here. I've been doing this for a few years. Uh, 100 minus 56 is 44 all over two. Now, if I want to simplify 44, I can write out 44 as two times two times 11, right? Bring out a set of twos, and that gives you two root 11. So I'm going to rewrite this as 10 plus or minus two root 11, all over two. What I can do is I can factor a two out of the top. So I have two parentheses, five, positive or negative. That two is now gone if I factor it out, square root of 11 over two. These twos cross each other out. You're left with five plus or minus the square root of 11. And in this case, they only want the plus version, so we'll pretend that's not there, but what they really want is what's inside the root and n is going to be 11, the number that's inside the root. That's it.